What's up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with another sports topic. And today we're going to talk some football, Houston Texans football. Today we're going to talk about improvement because that's what we're looking for, y'all. We out here looking for improvement. We're going to talk about it. We're going to break it down before we get in there. Like I've been telling you before, if you're liking the content, man, make sure you liking the channel. Make sure you're watching all the videos. you commenting on all the videos. you liking all the videos. you sharing all the videos on all social media platforms. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, any type of social media platform you use. Make sure you share them on them same social media platforms. Also, follow me on social media as well. The link in the description below. Hey, man, the NFL season is right around the corner. We're in the middle of the preseason. The NFL season is right around the corner. We try to get this channel growing and growing and growing. I really appreciate everything that y'all do. I'm just trying to bring good content to y'all. So I need y'all to help me return by liking the channel, subscribing to the channel, watching the videos, commenting on the videos, and sharing the videos. Let's get this channel growing and growing and growing. Really, really appreciate that. Now, like I said, we're talking about, we're looking for improvement. And more specifically, CJ Stroud. What we seen last week against the Patriots was not a good performance. Um, do want to be honest? It's not. It was not even all his fault. Uh, poor play calling by uh, by by Slowick. Why are you doing seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty step drop backs with uh with not having your full offensive line out there? That's another point. Why is your full offensive line not out there? We already know that Tyus Howard is hurt, but where was Tunsil? Where was Shaq Mason? You only gave him two. Only gave him two drives. He only attempted four passes. Didn't get a chance to work through his mistakes. Didn't get a chance to get into a rhythm. And we want to see that improve. And like I said, I was at the practice on uh, Wednesday, the joint practice against the Miami Dolphins. In the beginning of that practice, the uh, the def uh, the defensive line, the front seven, was getting back there. They was getting pressure. It was getting pressure on their right side, up their right side, and then some uh, and some of the middle, um, uh, like in, in, in the interior. Things that we definitely need to work upon. But CJ. Like as the practice progressed and got and got got through, he got better. He was able to find uh, his uh, tight end Dalton Schultz. He was able to find Tank Dale. He actually made some good passes to both uh, to uh, um to Nico and made some and made some good passes to uh, um um a uh, Hudson wasn't completed. And then it's like Thursday was even uh, even better. I didn't go to Thursday practice, but Thursday was an even better day. Um, it seems like from everything that I read on the TV that he had even better. Day. He basically outplayed Tua. Out of, out of the quarterbacks, he he outplayed all the quarterbacks obviously for the Texas side, and also outplayed the quarterbacks for the Miami Dolphins side as well. So we see improvement. Now we just need this to translate to the field. We need to see this on, on, on game day because, like I said, last week, uh, four attempts, two for four, interception, sack, uh, um, uh, um, sack for fifteen yards, uh, um, only got thirteen yards off of his two off his two completions. Um, wasn't able to move the football and was under the rest. Now a lot of him being under the rest was like I said was poor play calling by Bobby Slowick. Why are you calling all these drop back these, these deep drop backs when you have a makeshift offensive line? And another thing that you why are you out there with a makeshift awesome offensive line in the preseason? I understand that Larry Mitunsel we we know Larry is a baller, he's a left tackle, he's the highest paid left tackle in the field. You want to give him days off, you want to give him rest. You also pay Shaq Mason another veteran, you want to give him days off, you want to give him rest. But you have a rookie quarterback out there. So you you have a rookie quarterback out there, and you don't need to get your rookie quarterback out there being under the rest the entirety of the game. I think that's the reason why they pulled him out. That's the reason why he didn't get a chance to work through his mistakes like AR did, like Bryce did. And Bryce ain't play well either. But why why he didn't get to work and get more time to work, work through his mistakes? Because if you continue to put him out there, he was going to get hurt because he was under pressure because – Tight, uh, because obviously Tyson Howard is hurt, but uh, um, Larry McTunsil's not there and Shaq Mason out there. So tomorrow in the game against the Miami Dolphins, those guys better be there. And he better get more than uh, – he, he should get more than a quarter. He should get more than a quarter. I, I, it needs to be deeply into the second quarter. I need to be halfway in the second quarter before you pull your starters out. I need CJ to be able to work through and progress – it baby get a little because more than likely he won't play that last preseason game. So I don't want to see this performance week one against the uh, uh, the Baltimore Ravens in uh, um, sep uh, September 10th. We want to see that. We don't want to see that at Baltimore. We need him to work through his progressions. We need him to work through his mistakes because he's going to have some mistakes. He's going to have some growing pains, just like D'Amico's going to have some because he's a rookie head coach. Bobby Slogan is a rookie offensive coordinator. These guys are going to have to work through their mistakes. I understand all that. But see, that's the problem that you have. You have all this newness coming in. You have a new head coach, first-time head coach, first-time offensive coordinator, first-time quarterback's coach, 
and uh, and also a, a, a rookie head, a rookie quarterback. So you have all these first timers coming in, trying to learn the NFL at one time. Yes, we know D'Amico's been in the NFL as a player and also been as, as a linebacker's coach in the D.C. But it's different calling them plays. As, uh, it's different being a head coach and managing the whole team, managing the whole fifty-three man roster, managing the whole game. Bobby Sloan, we we know that you did whatever you was doing. Uh, um, uh, um, Office assistant or core best coach, whatever it was, his actual title and job thing at at the San Francisco 49ers. But he never has been the full fledged office coordinator calling plays. This is new to him as well. Same thing with Gerard Johnson. Gerard Johnson was a backup in the field. I know he's been on some teams uh, as far as like you know like helping helping them out and being assistant coaches, but never been an actual quarterbacks coach. All these things are new to all these people. So because of that, a lot of things really ugly head. And it's a lot of blatant, like uh, like a lot of blatant red, not red flags, but just a lot of like oh, oh. And again, because CJ's the one out there, he's the he's the number two pick in the draft. He's the guy you go always going to be compared to Bryce Young, and the guy that's out there, he's going to take they are it's them to gift and the curse. He's going to take the brunt of the blame, or all the blame when something happened. Then all the rewards when, when everything going good, when he out there shining. He's gonna get all the rewards. Oh, he's a, he's a Hall of Famer. He's an MVP. He's an All Pro. Woo woo woo. But if he has a mistake and has a bad game, oh, he's a bust. We shouldn't have drafted him. Da 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 da. So you have all those different things. So he's gonna take all that. So it's kind of the gift of the curse of being the quarterback of the franchise, being the quarterback of the team. We understand all that. But what we need to see, we need to see him progress. We need to see him improve. And I have no doubt that he can progress. He can improve. Improve. But we need to see it happen. And we need to allow him it to happen, and everybody needs to do a better job. Like, like I said, D'Amico, I, I know, you, I know you're a head coach, and I know, hey, you want to give your veterans time, you want to give them rest, but you got a rookie, you got a rookie quarterback out there. Because again, if D'Amico was five years in, he would have never let his rookie quarterback go out there without his office line. Or if Bobby Slow, even if, if he was a a, 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 um, a a rookie quarter, a rookie head coach, if Bobby Slow was a veteran uh, office coordinator, been off, been office coordinator ten years, former NFL coach, and you know it didn't work out, and he come, he, he's back as as, as, as OC. He's not going to let D'Amico Ryan's do that. He's like, no, hey, now the office line got to be out there. If you gonna have your rookie quarterback out there, and again, rookie head coach, rookie OC, but your quarterback is a veteran, like Aaron Rodgers or something like that. I'm not going out there with the office line, like Tom Brady. I'm not going out there with the, the office line. If my office line is not playing, I'm I'm not playing. But again, those guys, if they step up and say I'm playing. They office the line is playing like uh, uh, like they they go like they going in. Hey, Larry McTunsil, get your stuff. Hey, Shaq Mason, get your stuff. Hey, 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 get your stuff. Hey, Titus, put a cast on their hand. Let's go. Uh, uh, if if Tom Brady won, if Tom Brady won his office line out there, they gonna be out there. Or oh, he ain't going out there. But if he want to get that work in, if him or Peyton or Drew Brees, Patrick Mahomes. If they want that work in, they're gonna the offensive line's gonna get that work in just like they're gonna get that work in. So I think it's because everybody's new to the game. Everybody's new to the game, everybody's new to the situation. And I think that's the reason why we didn't see CJ play a lot and didn't get a chance to work through his mistakes because he was out there just getting beat up. And you don't want to you don't want your rookie quarterback, your franchise, you think about the next 10 to 15 years, not just the preseason game, you don't want him to take a beating. So I understand why they pulled him out. That was just a bad coaching decision by D'Amico Ryans and Bobby Slowick. And the same thing, Bobby Slowick, why is you, it's 2023. Why is you, why is you uh, um, out here, even with your offensive line, in a preseason game, why is you calling 20-step drops? Like, why are we calling 20-step drops in 2023? Why? Not, not to mention you have a rookie quarterback with a makeshift offensive line and they're getting pressure. Why are you calling these deep drawbacks? That makes no sense. But again, that's him being young in the game and not understanding. Uh, he, he he doesn't know his offense. Yes, we know it's the Kubiak Shanahan offense. And don't get me wrong, I have no problem. I, I have no problem with us having Bobby Sloan because he's run, he's going to be running in the uh, Shanahan offense, the, 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 the Kubiak Shanahan offense. It's my favorite offense in the NFL. I love the offense. So that's why I was happy that we got him. But him not him not being in this situation before. These are some of the red flags or, or things that's going to rule his, uh, rule his ugly head in the beginning. That's part of the reason why some of the games in the beginning of the season that you might think the Texans should win, they might not because the, they got to work out all these kinks. These are a lot of kinks from a head coach, office coordinator, quarterback, new receivers, office line, the office line now gelling together. 
Like nothing. The offense now is not going to get enough time to gel together. It's going to be mid to the end of the season when this thing starts working like a well-oiled machine, if you want to be completely honest, because the offense line got to get, like, like Tyus Howard getting hurt. That's a setback. These guys not in the preseason game. These are setbacks. They got to work through it. They got to get their cohesion together. You got a rookie out, you got a rookie out there in the office uh, as a center. You have a guy who you just traded for and Shad Mason. So both of those are new to the situation. Ty, uh, uh, Kenyon Green was a rookie last year and didn't play that well and missed time being out of shape and being hurt last year as well. The only real guy that you really have is Larry Tussle and Titus Howard who been out there for a long period of time. Those are the only guys who really been up there. So you got to get all this cohesion. You got to get all this melt melting together. Then you bring it back. Rookie head coach, rookie OC, rookie uh, uh, um, quarterback's coach, and then obviously rookie quarterback. All these things together make stuff to be a little bit, un not unfavorable, but just un unideal. It's not an ideal circumstance. These things are not ideal circumstances. Do I think they'll be able to work through it and get better? Absolutely. Because the payoff, once all this stuff, once all this newness wears off, it's going to pay off in huge dividends. Because that means you're going to have these guys for long periods of time. It's like giving the curse of being and be, uh, being, uh, being uh, uh, youthful. Like, yeah, you're young. You kind of don't really know what's going on. But once you finally get it, it's going to be hard to stop. And you can be able to, and you can be able to enjoy it for a long time, like the Astros. It took the Astros a while, but the Astros were able to enjoy their success and continue to still enjoy their success because they wasn't an old team when they first started winning. They, they all this stuff started when they were young, so they they grew up with it. Now, like now, it's able to pay off a little bit more. So it's able to pay off, and you're able to have long term success, and that's what we want. We want long term success. We don't want to be a flash in the pan. We want to have long term success. And I believe the Texans will have long-term success because I will believe that these guys have and will improve. Like I said, as the day and practice went on um, against the Miami Dolphins, you've seen CJ get more comfortable. And he got more comfortable in the way he practiced, the way he played, and it looked better. The pass be became more crisp. And as I said, uh, from the information that happened uh, uh, on yesterday's practice, on Thursday's practice, he looked even better. And on both days, Thursday and Wednesday, outshine Tua and uh, Miami, uh, all the quarterbacks in Miami, obviously all the quarterbacks in Houston. So it's going to be a little bit of time, but I definitely think these guys are going to progress and get better. And I, I believe that we're going to have a better performance against the Miami Dolphins. Uh, CJ and the offense will have a better performance as a collective, as a unit, than they did uh, um, last week against the New England Patriots. Like, share, subscribe. If you haven't, comment below. If you haven't, click that bell, get more videos. I holla.